Hi everyone, and thanks for tuning in into my online presentation about my research plan for my thesis project. Today I will be talking about the city of Semrang and its various environmental issues that it's facing and how the city is coping with these challenges. My topic and presentation will tie into the core themes of environmental injustice, urban political ecology and infrastructural violence which we discussed during our urban inequalities course this semester. I will firstly begin by introducing the context and its problem. Semarang is the capital and largest city in central Java province in Indonesia with a population of 1.6 million inhabitants. It is located directly by the Java Sea and is an important regional center and port. Its topography is quite varied, ranging from 340 meters above sea level to 2 meters below, showing its diverse landscape of narrow lowland and hilly areas. The lowland areas concentrate low-income households who settled from rural areas and most of Semarang illegal settlements are located here. Areas situated more uphill have seen concentrated financial investments for housing since the mid-90s and therefore accumulate more affluent citizens. As the lower city area is already 2 meters below sea level in some parts, it faces great environmental challenges, such as annual flooding caused by monsoon seasons as well as floods caused by the overflowing of sea tides and rising sea levels, which have increased due to significant coastal erosions exacerbated by climate change. Solely based on the topography of the city, we can see a clear division between the affluent class living in higher areas not as affected by environmental challenges and the poorer households in the low areas directly challenged by sea level rises, coastal erosion and flooding. This references Mohai and Al article, which says that exposure to pollution and other environmental risks are unequally distributed by race and class, which emphasizes environmental injustice. Additionally to the exposure to the mentioned environmental challenges, Semarang is also sinking due to land subsidence. Land subsidence occurs due to excessive groundwater extraction, which has increased severely since the 1990s for industrial and commercial purposes causing the land to sink. Likewise, the increase of urbanization and the weight of the growing number of buildings, combined with the fragile sediment, exasperates land subsidence. Therefore, to minimize the effects of coastal erosion and flooding in Semrang, the Indonesian national government is aiming to construct a seawall and toll road as a way to prevent flooding risks, sea level rise, and the intensity and frequency of storms, and to provide alternative water access to industries limiting their groundwater extraction, causing land subsidence. However, these projects have been severely criticized, as for one, they do not address land substance, and also, the physical structures of the wall will break the longshore current and distribute it to the east and west, which would mean that people who are located beyond the protection zone of the two projects will experience more tidal flooding and coastal erosion. The people located beyond the protection zones are mainly the citizens located in previously mentioned low-lying areas already facing intense environmental challenges. The principle of environmental justice is that all people are entitled to equal protection of environmental laws and public health laws and regulations, yet by introducing the seawall it will favour and protect one group over another, creating winners and losers, increasing disadvantages for the marginalised poor in the low-lying areas, which highlights environmental inequality and correlates with the findings presented by Mohai that in general ethnic minorities, people of colour and low-income communities are confronted by a higher burden of environmental challenges than other groups. Moreover, by creating a wall that favours one group over another, promotes asking questions about who produces what kind of socio-ecological configurations and for whom. Who decided to build the seawall and who will it benefit? Does it only interest political and economic elites for setting neoliberal agendas? These sort of questions encompass urban political ecology. Understanding these would allow to contribute to more equitable relations and empower marginalized groups. Lastly, the creation of the seawall relates to infrastructure violence and the articles by Iona Data. Protecting only parts of Semrang through the seawall results in urban violence as it conceptualizes infrastructure as geographically uneven. Disproportionate protection from environmental degradation yields urban exclusion and discrimination of the low income households living in the low-lying areas through selective targeting and choosing to protect more affluent communities over the poor. The lack of protection and lack of access to this infrastructure oppresses the low-income households and relates to infrastructure violence and social and environmental inequality. In conclusion, building the seawall will further increase social, environmental and economic inequality within the city. This is only one case study example of many environmental injustice projects carried out around the world. 
It is therefore always important to question who benefits from these projects and who is building the wall for whom. Thank you.